I want to welcome you to the Writer's Anointing Show. And I just want to say welcome. I am Dr. Jewel Williams. I'm an author, a coach, and the owner of Tribe Production Publishing Incorporated, where we help people win in publishing. And so last month, I, I shared with you about Barack Jeremiah's scribe. And today's episode, I'm titling Write It, and this is Lessons from Habakkuk. So let me just recap for you about last month. My purpose for last month's message was I wanted to just help us begin to view our writing abilities as more than a way for us to become famous or rich or even well sought after. I wanted to encourage us that the gift we have was given to us by God so that we could be his voice in this earth. And so today I want to talk to you about writing from a very popular very well-known piece of scripture, Habakkuk 2 and 2. And I'm going to read it first for you in two versions. And I just want to give you a little background and then I'll go into my points for today. So in Habakkuk 2, 2, I'm reading from the Amplifies. It says, Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and engrave it plainly on clay tablets so that the one who reads it will run. And then I'm going to read it from the New Living Translation. And it reads, Then the Lord said to me, write my answer plainly on tablets so that a runner can carry the correct message to others. So let's talk about this. Let me give you a little bit of background. You know, the prophet was initiated this conversation with God based on his distress and how he has perceived that God is maybe inactive in the world. So he wanted to see God do more, particularly in the areas of area of justice for evildoers. And so the book of Habakkuk pictures this frustrated prophet, much like Jonah, though Habakkuk channels his frustration into prayer and eventually prays to God rather than trying to run from the Lord as Jonah did. So let me just give you a little background. This is not a lot, not a big piece of of writing, but I want to give you an outline so that it makes sense about what I want to share today. So that in that first chapter, we see Habakkuk's first complaint, and then we also see God's answer. And then in that same chapter one, we see Habakkuk's second complaint. And as we move and transition to chapter two, we see God's answer to Habakkuk's second complaint. And then that final chapter three is Habakkuk's prayer and praise. And so let's just look for a moment at his first complaint. In Habakkuk 1, 2, he says to God, How long, O Lord, must I call for help, but you do not listen or cry out to you? Violence, but you do not save. And so you can see in, 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 in this particular verse that Habakkuk is frustrated because he's seeing all of this thing. There's this passion that he has about what he's seeing, but yet his frustration is it does not seem as though God has an answer, or though God is allowing this violence to continue. And then God gives him an answer. And in Habakkuk 1 and 5, the answer that he gives him, he says, Look at the nations and watch and be utterly amazed. For I am going to do something in your days that you would not believe even if I told you. And this in this verse, you know, we see that God tells him, Oh, I see. I'm aware. I've not, I'm not sleeping. I'm not slumbering. I'm not, you know, caught off guard. I am aware. And he tells them, oh, what I'm going to do, you're not going to even believe you. Even if I told you what I'm going to do, because it's going to be so miraculous, so unexpected. And so in the verse that I'm using today is, is, is actually God's answer to Habakkuk's second complaint, where he wanted to know if God would respond to him. And God does. He requires Habakkuk to write the vision, what will be beneficial for the people. And if you don't read the entire chapter, you see God gives him many woes and what happens to those that are not right before the Lord. So how does this apply to my topic today, writing? And as I stated last month, I believe our call to be writers is more than about making money and fame. It is to be the voice God has called us to be in this earth. I really believe as Christian authors that That is what our mandate is. It's to be the voice of God in this earth. And he will do that in many ways. Um, You know, so I'm not saying there's going to be one type of book that every Christian author is going to write. But no matter what genre you write in, I still believe that God will use you as his voice to get and draw people to what he wants for their life. To draw them to a place of understanding their need for him. 
And I used a quote, and I want to I want to share it here that I wrote in a piece uh, that I uh, that I wrote in another place, and and what I wrote is this: the purpose of a writer is to keep civilization from destroying this them destroying itself, and that was by Albert Camus, I believe is his name. Let me read that again: the purpose of a writer is to keep civilization from destroying itself, and I just believe that's so true. You know, this person was probably not talking about you know Christian authors particularly, but just writers in general. But I think that's even a greater mandate for you and I as Christian authors, and that is that God is calling us to be to to use our words in a way that helps civilization helps humanity to keep from destroying him themselves to keep the enemy from taking away the purpose of what God has called us to be and so I don't know about you but when I look at that that's a, that's a heavy mantle that's a heavy calling and it's one that I believe we should look at consistently through the eyes of God to say what is it you want me to do and what God was doing to Habakkuk in this in this in this reading, I believe is he was preparing him to write the truth down for others so that they would would not walk in disobedience and, and, and then be destroyed and destroy themselves because they did not have the truth before them. So he was preparing Habakkuk to be the one that carried the truth or to present the truth so that others would be able to successfully walk and run in this life. And have you ever thought that the writing you do or that your writing could be the one source that changes the trajectory of somebody's life. That was the background of, of what of what I really want us to see is that maybe your writing, maybe the book that's inside of you is what God is going to use to change the direction of somebody's life. So let's go back to the, the verses again. I'm going to read them again for you. And then I'm going to share with you how I believe God wants us to, to see ourselves as writer through these verses. So again, Habakkuk 2 and 2 of the Amplified says, Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and engrave it plainly on clay tablets so that the one who reads it will run. And Habakkuk 2, 2 in the New Living Translation said, Then the Lord said to me, Write my answer plainly on tablets so that a runner can carry the correct message to others. So let me give you my first point that I see that we can apply to our lives through this verses. And that is, what is the Lord's answer to you regarding your role in kingdom building? Let me say that again. What is God talking to you about? What is the Lord telling you in your answer to the questions that you're asking him? What is his answer to you regarding your role in kingdom building? Habakkuk could receive instructions because he was in communication with God. You and I must communicate with God to understand his heart about the things that grieves us, that that draws us in. In fact, the things that you are most passionate about is probably the place where you need to be writing from. The first thing God allowed to happen with Habakkuk was for him to be bothered by what he saw. That drew him to then ask God questions. How you know you are going in the right direction with, with your writing is, is the topic something that you have a strong passion toward that you are strongly um, drawn towards do you get grieved at the brokenness of women maybe because that's the area God is drawing you so what my question would be for you to begin to ask yourself what grieves you what do you feel passionate about where 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 is this something that just you you find yourself constantly going before God you know maybe you're one that you just you're grieved about the lack of prayer maybe you should be the one that is writing about prayer Where are you grieved? That begins to tell you that may be the place that God is calling you to write from. And then the second question that I believe we can learn from and have answered through this this reading is, what are you writing? God gave Habakkuk instructions on what to write. He could not write what he wanted. He had to listen to the instructions of God. And as a writer, your inspiration and instruction must come from God, just like mine does. What is he telling you to write? We can't get instruction for things we are not asking the questions about. As I began telling you the outline, Habakkuk received the revelation, but he had to ask the questions first. So what questions are you asking God as it relates to your writing? 
And I don't know if I shared this, you know, I've shared this often and I may have shared it in the last um, taping was when I first started to write, I was writing a book and it was going to be a juicy one, but I didn't ask God about that. I just sat down and I was writing. Why? Because I wanted to be, you know, the next Joan Collin or something. That was, you know, my mindset. But the more I wrote that thing, the worse I felt until finally I said, God, because I began to get grieved about what I was writing. And I asked God, well, Lord, what am I supposed to be writing? And then he said, it was almost like he said, thank you. And then he gave me the outline of what I was supposed to be writing. And so I would encourage you and admonish you to ask God that question. God, what am I writing? What is it that you want me to write? And then the third point I want to bring out is, can someone else carry your message? God told Habakkuk to make sure his message was easy, clear, and able to be carried uh, by someone else. Look at it this way. When you write your book, can others carry the message you've written? Can they carry it for themselves and can they share it with others? This only happens when you make the message accessible to those that read your writing. You don't want to try to be so deep and just, you know, you know, whatever that no one can get to what it is you're writing. We have to make it plain. We have to make it simple. We need to be able to take big, strong matters and break them down to small, bite-sized pieces so that individuals are able to understand what it is that we are trying to share with them. And then the fourth point is, is it the correct message that God has given to you? And is is it the message that God has given? As I stated before, Habakkuk could not decide what he wanted to write. Therefore, he had to make sure the message was the one God called him to write. You and I have to learn to be secure in writing what we are graced to write. I may not be able to write the type of book you write, but that doesn't make my story any less vital. And it's vice versa. Just because you can't write like someone else does not mean that your story is not, not needed. I believe God wants us to understand as long as we are writing what he has instructed us to write, then we are getting the message right. We are telling the story the way he wants us to tell the story. And then the fifth and final point is, is the message clear and easily understood? I have to ask myself the question. You have to ask yourself the question, is my message clear? So in today's terms, what does that mean? Are you willing to look over what you've written to make sure that the one that is reading what you wrote is able to understand what you meant? That's real simple. That in another word, in another way, that's edit, edit, and then edit again. We have to make sure that our message is clear. See, I can know in my heart what I meant to say, but that may not show up on my paper. So I have to be willing to to read it and look at it and fine tune it to make sure that when I give it to the person that needs to carry it, they can carry it, that they can read it, they can understand it. And I love what God says in the New Living Translation. It says, write my answer plainly on tablets. So when you and I write, we have to realize that, you know, and I've said this often before, I'm not the creator of the what I'm writing. I'm the typist. It's not my answer. It's, 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 it's what God's answer is to the things that he has given in, in, in my heart. When I ask the questions to him about, you know, what does it mean to do this? Or what does it mean to, to be a leader? Or what does it mean to, to, to be a wife? When I ask him those questions and then he gives me his answer, then I am writing his answer in the books on the pages of my books. It is not Jules answer. I'm not that smart. Yes, I have a doctorate degree, but I I will admit to you that I'm not that smart. Guess what? Because you're not that smart. We need God to tell us what is it that you want us to write. And then we will, we will honor you and write it the way you want us to write it. So I hope this blessed you today. Because what's the main point that I want us to understand from the lesson, Habakkuk, in the, in the write the vision and make it plain is, you won't get the answers to questions that you're not asking. If you want to know what's needed, if you want to know what books to write, if you want to know what's on the heart of God, you have to go and ask him. You have to pray and say, Lord, why are these things grieving me? And what do you want me to do about them? Maybe that's what he wants you to do is to write a book about it. Maybe he wants you to preach about it. Maybe he wants you to pray about it. But you won't know, and you and I won't know, what he wants to do until we ask him. So I just pray that this month, 
as we, we go into this new month of May, that you take the time and say, Lord, what is it that you want me to write? What is your answer to the questions on my heart? What is your, what is your answer to the things that are grieving me? And when you give me those answers, now what do I do with them? Let me pray for us as we are seeking to carry God's message his way. Lord, you have given each of us a message that has our influence, our life experience, and that it includes the way we think and, and how you speak to us. And so, Father, we ask that you would help us to take these unique stories and help us to write it. Help us not to compare ourselves to others and their writing ability. Help us to celebrate the gift that you have given that is in us. Help us to discern what is a burden on our hearts. And like Habakkuk, he questioned in you and, and you began to answer him. And when you gave him the answer, there came his assignment. You gave him his assignment. So Father, we ask you to help us when we bring you our questions and our concerns. Then you show us what our assignment is. What have you commissioned for us to write on the pages? Because Father, we don't want to just put out another book because there are many, many books out there. But Father, we want to put books out that draw people to you, that draw people out of destruction, that draw people to the place so that they begin to see, like even when you told Habakkuk in that verse, when he said, Lord, how long is this stuff going to go on? But you said, even if I told you, you wouldn't be able to understand the vastness of what's getting ready to happen. But let us begin to draw people in through our books to come to the understanding that what God wants to do in their lives is going to be beyond what they can even understand. So give us the answers we need so we can write this vision plainly on paper for others to read it and then help us to run with it. Help them to run with it. Help us to give it into the hands of people in a way that they understand it and that they can successfully run in this life. This is our prayer. Amen. I want to thank you for joining me today. Again, I'm Dr. Jewel Williams. I'm the owner of Tri Production Publishing Incorporated. If you're looking for a publisher or a coach, you can go to my website, publishdivision.com, and you will see all of my information there. You can also join us on Facebook, Facebook, and my page is Publish Division, and you'll find it. I, again, our company is Tri Production Publishing. You can also look for our authors group. I have a group called Vision Writers Group. It's called Vision Writers Group, and that's also on Facebook. We would love you to join, whether you are a published author or not, whether you publish with us or not. It's just a place that I've created for authors to be able to join together to share. You know, As Christian authors, we want to be able to find a place where we can share our faith, we can ask for prayer and we can encourage one another. And so we would love to have you join us there. Again, I'm Dr. Jewel Williams, owner of Tri Production Publishing Incorporated, where we help people win with Christ. Until next time, write it. God bless.